Twilight Sparkle's hooves clumped quietly in the soil as she, deep in thought, walked through the forest trail. She often found herself walking this trail when she had to think things over, when she had to think about problems she would not find answers to in any book. All around her were the peaceful sounds of nature, accompanied by the early morning light pouring through the leaves, and although she was oblivious to them as she mulled over yesterday's events, the ambiance nevertheless helped her focus. Over and over, the events of her brother's wedding played in her head. Images of the changeling queen and her army, their attack on her friends and her home, and her mentor lying defeated on the ground swirled around. Nightmares of Canterlot in ruins and of her brother enslaved by that monster had granted her restless sleep last night, forcing her to toss and turn until the wee hours of the morning. Had it not been for that one lucky shot, if that monster hadn't dropped her guard just long enough for Cadence and my brother to act, she had worn a strong, happy face when everything was over for every pony's sake, but deep down she was in strife. No pony else seemed to respect just how close they had come to complete and bitter defeat. The changelings were monsters, but who knows how intelligent they truly were. Their attack was planned and organized. It was any pony's guess how long they had been hidden amongst the ponies, watching and waiting for the right moment to strike. And it isn't nearly over yet. The changelings had been defeated, but they were still out there. They lived in great numbers, were formidable on their own, and could become any pony they chose in the blink of an eye. They were a threat, a grave and deadly plague that had tried to devour them all once and they could very well be poised to try again. That's when Twilight saw it lying in the dirt just a short distance from her, its chitinous body left in an unmoving heap on the forest trail was easy to recognize even in the low morning light. Twilight understood what had happened in a heartbeat. Her brother and Cadence's blast had literally catapulted the changelings back to wherever they came from, but this one had somehow been knocked off course. Instead, it had landed in the forest north of Ponyville, and judging by the large crater and matching skid marks in the dirt, it had hit hard. Twilight cautiously walked forward, cringing inwardly as she forced herself to look away from the shallow trench dug in the dirt by the changeling's body as it had dragged to a stop. Its beetle-like wings, or rather what was left of them, lay in pieces leading up to its body. Twilight froze in place once she got close enough to notice movement in its chest. It's still alive. The fear that this might be a trap nagged at Twilight and stopped her from moving any closer. The changeling lay on its side with its gnarled, hole-filled legs sprawled out to its left, almost as if it were a sleeping dog. It didn't look like it had made any attempt to move since it had hit. Realizing this, Twilight's rational side overpowered her caution and gave her the courage to move closer. This isn't a trap. This is just one lone changeling with rotten luck. Twilight slowly closed the distance and got within reach, gently stretching out a hoof to touch its face. Like an insect, its skin was hard and barely yielded under her touch. Its body was covered in a shiny exoskeleton that acted like armor. That was, no doubt, how it had managed to survive such a harsh crash, but even then, its injuries were severe. Twilight knew nothing about their anatomy, but she didn't need to. One thing was simply clear. It's not going to live much longer. The changeling finally stirred, awoken by her touch. It slowly opened its eyes to look straight into hers, and bared its already protrudingly long fangs with a threatening hiss. Its scowl wavered when Twilight wasn't phased by its attempt to intimidate her, and its hiss faded into a quiet, defeated sigh. This wasn't the swarming enemy she and her friends had faced in Canterlot. The changelings that had plunged the normally peaceful city into abject chaos were a plague that sought 
only to destroy and conquer. This creature lying at her hooves was an injured animal that had resigned itself to its inevitable fate. Twilight hated these things for what they had done to her brother and mentor, and for what they had tried to do to every pony she knew and cared for. But this pitiable creature had pushed that blazing hatred deep down inside her to where it could only smolder dimly. As the creature stared up at her with its weak blue eyes, she could only meet its gaze with compassion. No creature deserved such hate in its final moments. Instead, Twilight sat beside the dying creature and gently stroked its forehead, hoping she could comfort it before the end. Barely even able to move, the changeling hissed weakly at her once more. Shh, I won't hurt you, she said with a sympathetic smile. The changeling responded only by trying to lift its head, but lacked the strength to raise it more than a few inches from the ground. Without a second thought, Twilight flicked her tail into place and gently guided its head onto the makeshift pillow. Apparently understanding her intention, the changeling offered no resistance and allowed its head to rest on her tail. "'What's your name?' asked Twilight. She was hopeful for anything she could use to address it other than by it, but the changeling did not respond. It only continued to look at her briefly, before letting its gaze wander away from hers. "'Please tell me.' Again, she was met with silence. Twilight found herself wondering if it could even talk. Their queen could speak, but the changelings themselves had only spoken when disguised as her and her friends. And even then, they only repeated what my friends and I had already said. Perhaps speech was only granted to them in that form, or perhaps they could only mimic speech like parrots. These creatures were able to mimic ponies' emotions and behaviors, but did they truly possess them? On their own, were they capable of speech, or even of higher thought? Were they capable of logic and reason, or did they merely follow their queen's commands like a hive of ants? I don't have one. Surprised, Twilight looked down to find the creature once again staring up at her. The clarity of its voice had astounded her. It sounded forced, as if speech was something that did not come naturally or often to it, but it was nevertheless as clear as any pony she knew. We spend too much time being some pony else to bother with names. Hearing that, Twilight was nearly brought to tears. Were these creatures truly so empty inside that they didn't even give themselves names? Was their culture truly devoid of individualism? Did they know art or create music? Did they even pursue knowledge, or was their entire existence devoted to feeding and conquering? It broke her heart to think that a sapient creature could exist without even the simplest beauties and comforts in life. Her gaze faltered and she held herself back from crying. I don't like being an individual. I have to be an individual every time I imitate a pony. It's a tiring strain to faint emotions. When I am free to be myself, I just want to be a faceless, forgotten shadow. <laughs> it abruptly stopped talking and started coughing, spitting a small amount of green fluid from the corner of its mouth. Twilight held it gently until its coughing fit had passed trying her best to see it through bleary eyes. You really don't feel anything. The only thing you can get from love or friendship is a tiring strain? After a moment of thought, the changeling chuckled humorlessly. We feel love and happiness. We just aren't ruled by feelings like ponies are. It would make feeding difficult. Hearing this reminded Twilight of what exactly was lying beside her. Her pity for this creature had almost made her forget what it truly was, but even then she couldn't bring herself to hate or abandon it. Its breathing was becoming shallow, and its voice had gotten weaker. It didn't have much time left. The very least she could do was let it say what it wanted to say before the end. As we feed, 
we suck the very life from our prey. Of course, we can leave before they perish, and they will recover, but we couldn't care less if a pony dies. It stopped talking for a moment, struggling to inhale and letting out a raspy cough before continuing. However, I spare my prey. I can slip into, and out of, a pony's life, and no pony will know the difference. No hassle. No fight. These things truly are hollow monsters. Twilight was enraged by its heartless rationale, but also felt angry at herself. The way it thought actually made sense to her. In some twisted way, even for an entirely selfish purpose, this thing actually possessed a sick form of morals. The changeling was breathing with much more difficulty now, struggling to hold air in its lungs before letting it loose. I disagree with our queen. Her plan to feed by conquering and ruling over ponies is a terrible idea. I much prefer slipping into a settlement and temporarily replacing a loved one. It can be fun seeing how well I play my part before the loved one returns. It trailed off again and seemed to think briefly with a sly smile before continuing, or seeing if I can outdo their loved one. It trailed off again, this time closing its eyes. Twilight first thought that this was the end, but it lived on with a ghost of a smile the entire time. It seemed to be reminiscing about a happy moment in its life. Twilight continued to gently stroke its forehead, glad that the creature could pass on with at least one happy memory. There was this one pony that I won the love of on my own. It was a true delight, a pony of my own on which to feed to my heart's content. And yet, yet, it struggled to speak once more as it tried to lift its head to look directly into Twilight's eyes. I couldn't keep her. Either she would have died, or I would have left and broken her heart. Either way, I couldn't keep her. Life is cruel, isn't it? Having asked its question, it gently laid its head down onto her tail once more and closed its eyes. Yes, it can be. But the changeling wasn't there to hear her any more. It had drawn its final breath, and left only its crumpled form in exactly the same place Twilight had found it. In that moment, sitting beside the fallen creature, Twilight felt as if the weight of the entire world was on her back. She sat for the longest time, only accompanied by the gentle ambiance of life around her in the forest, before finally letting her tears flow. It was midday, and the sun was high above Twilight Sparkle. She stood in front of the spot she had picked, giving a brief moment of silence for the changeling. Its final resting place would be here in this small clearing, buried in an unmarked grave at the base of a tree where the sun's rays could only touch the spot briefly at sunset. She felt at peace. In its eternal rest, it could be what it had wanted to be, a faceless, forgotten shadow.